we are looking down at the general view of the gorge and so it's a beautiful scenery and so it's the center of the gorge the gorge runs at about 55 kilometers it begins from Ndutu towards the plain of Serengeti, running up to here marking the center of the gorge and proceeds towards the east where it ends on the foot of the crater at a swamp known as Old Balmani. And so the lake, um, the gorge has been divided into two parts. We have the main gorge, which is the bigger one, and the small gorge, which begins on the mountain on the south. Both of them, they join down the gorge over there, forming a wildlife shape and proceeds towards the east where they end at Old Balmani Swamp. At the same time, the gorge was classified into five geological layers by Hans Rick in around 1913. And so it's from these geological layers that Mary and Louise Leakey have been doing um, excavation and they managed to find all of the how many remaining things that we have seen in the museum. So before the formation of the geological layers that you're seeing, the different colors of layer that you're seeing in front of you, there was a small saline lake similar to Lake Manyara presently. It was more of a saline lake. This lake had attracted several number of animals together with humans to live down the gorge. As you know, whenever you have water, there is life. So human coexisted with animals with the lake. But then the lake had nat disappeared naturally, basing on the fault produced by the volcanoes and part of it was later covered by volcanic lava. Speaking of these volcanic mountains, we're living along the Rift Valley system. As we all know, the Rift Valleys are mostly associated with volcanic mountains, and so part of the eruption of the volcanoes before the lava, we have ashes. Speaking of volcanic ashes, has minerals content such as sodium, calcium, which is very good at preserving materials unlike to any other kind of soil. And so these materials supported the preservation of the hominid material together with animals up to date. So later, the lake, after the lake had disappeared, and the black patches that you're seeing the other side and the other side, that is basalt, volcanic lava, such a hard rock on which it marked the floor of the gorge. From there then, we count five units on top of the basalt. Speaking of the huge pile of grayish soil that you see up to near the castle, that is layer number one, dating around 1.75 million years ago. From two million years to 1.75 million years ago. And so it's a, a very important layer for the archeologist since two hominy remainings were founded in that layer. Zinjanthropus and Homo habilis. Zinj was more of an ape. He used to walk with four limbs, unable to hunt. And for that case, he was more of a vegetarian. He used to eat the nuts, the seeds, the tree leaves, and the fruits. And for that case, he was nicknamed a nutcracker. He had coexisted with Homo habilis, who was very short, and, but then he was an, an upright man. He's the one who started hunting using small tools known as old one. Very rudimentary, but then they had at least helped him in hunting activities. Moving to the castle below the red, you see another volcanic ash, which has a slightly difference of color with the one below it. That is layer number two, dating around 1.2 million years ago. And so after excavation, Homo erectus has been founded in that layer. Homo erectus was very tall, unlike the previous one, and also the brain capacity had enlarged up to 900 cc. And for that case, he was smarter than the previous. He's the one who made fire, and from there then, he started using fire for cooking, keeping himself warm during the night, and keeping away the wild animals during the night. And so it's believed that it's from the Homo erectus who started moving from different parts from Africa to Asia and Europe. Speaking of the Neanderthals found, uh, founded in Europe, they all had their origin from Africa. And also Homo erectus, based on the brain capacity, was able to use and create uh, much bigger stone tools, which were very sharp and very efficient in butchering of the animals, known as Achillean stone tools. 
um, on top of that layer you see a huge pile of red soil that is layer number three dating around 800,000 years ago and so it's not volcanic ash but rather it's river deposition from highlands of Gorongoro as you can see when you come from highlands of Gorongoro you can see a plenty of red soil and so during excavation nothing of importance related to humans or animals was found it. As to why? Because of two reasons. First, um, red soil has a high content of iron, which is not good at preserving material. Just like how the rust consumes the iron, it's the same case for the hominid material. And the second reason was, after the layer was deposited, meaning it was a long period of floods, it was followed by a long period of drought, to the point that there were no water here. So that forced Homo erectus and other animals outside the gorge to search for water and food. On top of it, there are other two layers that have been eroded by water and sometimes weathering process. But then moving to the other hill over there, you can see another volcanic ash on top of the red. That is layer number four dating around 600,000 years ago. And so the climate had cooled down and it allowed humans to come back and live here down the gorge. Primitive Homo sapiens has been found there. Primitive Homo sapiens kept on using fire which was evolved by Homo erectus and he also made better and smaller stone tools, characterizers, um, choppers and flakes which sometimes they could have been put in front of a stick and act as a spear. On top of it, where you can see shrub and some green sisal, it's a layer that extends up to the museum. That's the fifth layer, and so it's the youngest when it comes to geological studies. Around 2,000 years ago, the so-called Homo sapiens sapiens has been founded there, and that is me and you. I'm afraid what will come after us, I don't know, probably the aliens or the robots, I don't know. But then, at around 2,000 years, all this was a flat area. You can see the red on the other side, interlinking the center, and far east. So what has happened is erosion and not excavation. As you know, this is a dry place. It's highly exposed to sun and heat, so it creates some cracks. So when it comes water, it easily clears the soil and this the formation of the rills and the galleys that you see down there. So apart from this side, on the other gorge over there, you see a roof with a green color, black color, and some few towers standing. That's Mary and Louis Leakey's campsite. That's the place they have stayed for more than 50 years while doing excavation down the gorge. The towers that you're seeing, those are the windmills were donated by the National Geographic Society, aiding the production of electricity to support communication with this campsite and the one that is founded at Kenya. And currently, the, the houses are more of a living museum. And um, apart from that, it's, um, it's a research center. Since the gorge is still active for researchers up to date, normally we host researchers in the months of June, July, and August, summertime. Uh, uh, from the researchers from different parts of the world, from US, Germany, Canada, Spain. They'll be coming here each year and they'll be doing excavation and whatever material they'll find, they'll take up there to the laboratories for further experiment. And so, to wind up, um, we, we have this. This is um, it's a word SISO, that's in English. And so in Maasai is Old Dubai. And so Old Dubai is the correct name of the gorge, not Old Dubai, as it was mispronounced by the first person to saw the gorge earlier 1911. Just uh, same mistake for many places around Gorongoro. Speaking of Serengeti, it's supposed to be Serengeti, Kilimanjaro to Kilimakiaro. So it's the same case here, Old Dubai and not Old Dubai. And so the Maasai have decided to name this place after this useful plant because you can see it has plenty grew down the gorge. You can see the, um, the place is very dry but then the plant is still green and for that case it stores water. So during dry time like this, 
there is no source of water the kettles kept by the Maasai, the baboons, the elephants, they will chew the plant to get water from it. And also the entire plant is fiber. So the Maasai, they will use the fiber from it as a string, tying up the grasses together to make the rooftop. And to some point, the roots of the plant are being boiled and one drink the soup in case of sickness as it cures malaria and sometimes um, stomach problems.